my sister and I are taking a cruise ship for one week. It leaves the warm beaches of Florida and heads down to the Caribbean islands for a few days and then comes back to Florida. We live in Colorado, so we have to take a flight to Florida the day before our cruise so we don't get left behind. The cruise tickets were free. I won a raffle at our holiday parties while working and won two free cruise tickets for one week. Living landlocked in Colorado, I've never gone on a cruise ship before since we have no oceans nearby. It will be a fun adventure for me and my sister, as my sister is the wild child who loves to get drunk and put on a show. I'm expecting there won't be any boring moments for the next week. We were boarding the cruise ship showing the security our tickets as we began to walk up the long ramp hauling our luggage. At the top of the ramp, I saw a young boy, maybe around 10 years old, standing there staring at me as I walked on the ship. The kid kind of freaked me out and reminded me of the typical horror movie kid. He was wearing jean overalls with one strap loose. He had pale white skin and a fresh cut going across his left eye. You can probably imagine why I compared him to a scary movie story kid, but I figured it was just some random kid enjoying the cruise with his parents. The kid kept staring at me as I looked away and headed up the stairs in search of room 302 where me and my sister had booked. We arrived at our room which had separate beds. I got the bed near the back sliding window and my sister got the one closer to the restroom. We took a nap since we were still jet lagged from flying the night before and had to walk 5 miles in the Florida heat hauling our luggage since we couldn't take a taxi to the cruise ship due to heavy traffic in the inner city. There was some sort of parade going on and they had closed a lot of the main roads. After a few hours napping, I woke up and noticed my sister had already gotten up and left the room. I looked out the back window and saw my sister sitting down on the chair enjoying the view, drinking a mixed drink she had gotten for free since our passes gave us free alcohol during the whole trip. I laughed and said, you couldn't wait for me, huh? As she laughed, got up and opened the fridge. She had the same mixed drink waiting for me too. We enjoyed our drinks on the balcony as we stared into the deep blue waters of the open ocean. We decided to shower up and head down to the lounge area where there was a lively group of people enjoying the music, food, and drinks. My sister took forever, so I told her I would wait for her down at the bar. I'll save her a seat and she can text me if she can't find me. She said okay, that she would be there in around 30 minutes give or take. I exited the room and headed down the long hallway towards the elevator which would take me to the bottom of the ship where the party life is taking place. I had to pee since my sister was in the bathroom. I could see the blue sign that said restroom before entering the elevator. I opened the restroom door and to my surprise, the young boy I saw earlier while boarding the ship that looked like a scary kid from a movie happened to be standing at the sink, washing his hands as he looked at me. I hesitated for a slight second and wanted to run out of the room but I figured I would pretend nothing scared me as I walked behind him towards the private stalls. I opened the door and got in the stall. My heart was racing from the fear. What were the odds that I would run into the same kid who I was already terrified of? I could hear the young boy still washing his hands as he hummed a song. He took rather long washing his hands as I still hadn't used the restroom and was just sitting in the stall waiting to hear the kid exit the door. What felt like forever as I sat there waiting I now heard the kid turn off the faucet and grab some paper towels to dry his hands. After this it went completely silent. I couldn't hear the kid and I never heard the door open. I peeked under the stall and could see the boy's feet standing in front of my stall. I freaked out and said, what are you doing? I'm going to tell your mom you're up to no good. I was bluffing as I was terrified and hoped to scare off the young kid so he would leave the bathroom. I peeked back under the stall door and he was gone. I glanced in all areas of the bathroom from underneath the stall and the kid was completely gone. I texted my sister and said to please come to the bathroom near the elevator that I was inside and some freaky kid was hiding in the bathroom messing with me. About 30 seconds later I hear the bathroom door open. My sister's voice calling my name. She said what's wrong as I sat in the stall in fear. I opened the stall as my sister stood there wearing a towel on her hair as she had recently gotten out of the shower. I told her some kid is in here messing with me. I hadn't seen him before when we arrived and he just stood there standing watching me with a cut on his face. I looked around the restroom and the kid was gone. 
He wasn't hiding in any of the stalls and just disappeared completely. I never heard him open the bathroom door and disappeared after I yelled at him. I asked my sister if she saw the boy exit the bathroom when she came over and said she hadn't seen anybody enter or exit the bathroom. We headed back to our room together. I told her from now on, I won't be going anywhere alone that will stick together for the rest of the trip. It's been a week now since the encounter and our boat has docked in Florida. We have to wait an hour before getting off the boat, but never encountered anything again on the large cruise ship. We exited the ship and were waiting on the sidewalk for the next taxi to pull up as they were making lines since lots of travelers were waiting for taxis. Finally our turn came to get on the taxi. The driver put our bags in the trunk as me and my sister jumped in the back seat. The driver asked which hotel we were going to and I told him, oh no, we're heading to the Tampa airport please. As he turned the taxi on and began to shift in gear, I glanced back at the large cruise ship that sought docked thinking back of all the good nights we had. When near the top of the ship, I saw the boy again. He was staring right at me while I sat in the back of the taxi. I grabbed my sister's arm and said, look, there's the boy. As I pointed to the entrance to where he stood, he had yet again vanished in the blink of an eye. I'm on a cruise ship with my parents. I'm an only child and my parents are both in the finance industry so they make a lot of money. We take usual cruises maybe around two three times per year. Last year we went on the Alaskan cruise in the cold North Pacific Ocean. It lasted an entire month and we explored some of the most remote coldest areas I've ever been to in my life. This year we switched it up and decided to take a tropical cruise since the cold weather had us cooped up in our room the majority of the trip our last year. This year our trip was leaving from Central American country El Salvador and was heading down to Brazil. The trip would take an entire month there and back. We've been staying in a beach resort hotel in El Salvador for the past two weeks while we wait for our cruise ship to arrive. Both my parents are remote working every morning while I have been practicing my skimboarding on the beach out front. There is a group of kids who skimboard almost every day and they have been giving me some pointers, although it's tough due to the language barrier since I don't speak Spanish. They are all around my age and have to go to high school in the daytime, so I'm usually already on the sand as they show up after school. They've been super nice to me since I gave one of the guy's younger brother my old skimboard. It was a bit too small for me since I had outgrown it and figured it would be perfect for the local kid as he wouldn't have to take turns using his brother's board anymore. The day had come for our cruise as we packed up our belongings while my father sat on a conference call as we waited for the taxi to arrive. I heard the taxi beep out front as I told my dad and mom, taxi's here, as they both stood up from the table and began grabbing their travel bags. I headed out the front door, pulling my luggage and my skimboard in my hand. Unfortunately, I can't skimboard on the cruise, but when we arrive in Brazil, we get to stay one week docked on the beach where I can continue practicing my skimboarding. We arrived at the ship. It was a lot smaller than I expected. This ship could have had around 150 rooms, compared to the larger ships back in the states that have thousands of rooms. As we boarded the ship, it was rather luxurious. It seemed it was smaller for a reason. It tendered to the more wealthy travelers, and I could see lots of businessmen and women sitting around and could only see three or four kids in the entire lobby area. A man greeted us wearing a butler suit that you would see straight out of a movie with a sharp bow tie that looked like it could slice his neck if he turned in the wrong direction. He escorted us to our room, which was on the second floor of the ship. As we entered, my mother was delighted with the room. It had two bedrooms and a jacuzzi on the balcony. It was one of the nicest rooms I have ever stayed in my life. The bathroom was lined with light gray marble tiles and the floors were heated with a bidet on the toilet as well. I knew it was fancy because only luxury places have bidets. The night went by and we went, we went down to dinner while my parents met up with some friends in their finance field and they chatted and had drinks for the next few hours. I was getting tired so I left to the room to watch some videos on my laptop and head to sleep. My parents stayed downstairs, still talking with their friends while enjoying some high-end mixed drinks. I arrived at our room and took a quick rinse and brushed my teeth. I grabbed my laptop and entered the separate bedroom, closing the door behind me. I let in bed as I caught up on some of the Game of Thrones series that had just released. I have TiVo back home so I record every show I miss. 
and can connect into my account with my laptop to watch it anywhere I want. I fell asleep with my laptop still sitting by my side as I laid in bed. I woke up around 1am, closed my laptop screen. As I closed the screen and turned to get back in bed, I had a weird feeling as I was being watched. I usually get this when it's my first time in a new place, as I'm a light sleeper so I have trouble falling back asleep. To clear my doubt that I was being stared at, I glanced around the room as I turned to my other side. To my shock, I saw something standing by my door. It was a large dark shadow. I stood there staring as I thought I was dreaming or my vision wasn't clear. I rubbed my eyes and it still stood there. It was a silhouette of a woman. She looked to be in her mid-thirties wearing older vintage clothes that looked to be from the 1950s. I freaked out and grabbed my cell phone. I turned on the flashlight as it lit up the entire room. I shined it at the door and there was nobody there. The dark shadow was gone and I was alone in my room as I could hear my father snoring in the room next door. I jumped out of bed and opened the door. I could see both my parents sound asleep in the main room. I freaked out and went back to bed. I left my door open this time and had trouble falling back asleep. What seemed like an entire sleepless night, I was awoken the next morning by my mother shaking me, saying let's go grab breakfast. I got out of bed, remembering my encounter last night as I sat on the side of the bed just staring at my door wondering what it was. I didn't tell my parents as I didn't want to freak them out since it was barely the first night on our cruise ship and we still had four more weeks in the same room. While sitting at breakfast, my father and mother had normal talk about the latest news in the finance industry and how the mortgage rates were going up. I usually chime in on the information since I'm also studying to be in the finance industry, but this morning I was extra silent. All I could think about was the scary lady standing in my room in the middle of the night. My father said, what's wrong, how come you're so quiet this morning? I couldn't resist it. I had to tell my parents what I saw. I told my dad, I know this might not sound so real, but last night as I laid in bed, I saw a woman standing in my room. I turned on my light and she was immediately gone. My mom giggled and said it was just a dream that I gotta stop watching all those scary stories when I go to bed. My father stared at me silently as he put down his toast on his plate. He looked at my mom and said, he's telling the truth. As I got up in the middle of the night around 4 a.m., I saw a lady sitting on our couch. She sat there for hours as I just laid in bed waiting for it to be over. I ended up falling asleep and when I woke up in the morning she was no longer there. My father had the same exact encounter I did the same night. My mother looked panicked and said oh no we're getting out of that room immediately as she stood up and walked to the reception area. I ran behind her to see what she was going to say as the lady in the reception said hello ma'am how can I help you? My mother asked if there was another room available on the bottom floor that we wanted to switch out please. The lady looked at my mom and in a frightened voice asked, are you in room 35? The reception lady had already guessed which room we were in without even telling her. My mom said yes, why? As the lady said, a lot of people request to leave this room for unexplained reasons. We do have a better, larger room on the bottom floor available, let me show you the way. The new room was amazing as well and had front door access to the pool area. It's been three weeks now since we switched rooms and none of us had had any more unexplained encounters.